It's time for a factorial challenge problem. So using our knowledge of factorials and other problem solving strategies, we need to somehow prove that this monstrosity is a perfect square. So if we can somehow turn this number into something like this, then we know that it's a perfect square. So let's try to do that. We're going to try and show that this number can be written like this. Now before doing any work, we need a strategy. So what makes perfect squares so special? Well, the definition of a perfect square is that they can be written as some number times itself. We can see this with some examples like 49, which is 7 times 7, Sixty four is eight times eight, and a hundred is ten times ten. So we see perfect squares seem to contain a pair of numbers that are equal to each other. Over here, we have a pair of sevens, over here, a pair of eights, and over here, a pair of tens. So we're gonna focus on the top part of this fraction because it's a lot more complicated than the bottom part. Now let's take some inspiration from what we did over here and pair up the terms at the top in a clever way. Let's take a look at what happens when we pair up two factorial and one factorial. Now, if you saw the video where we were evaluating and manipulating factorials, we learned one common problem solving technique for factorials in that video. And that was to break up the factorials so that we can write them in terms of other factorials. So the definition of two factorial is the same as two times one factorial, and then we have to multiply another one factorial. So we have a two, but then we also have one factorial multiplied by itself, which can be rewritten like so, let's take a look at the next two. How about 4 factorial and 3 factorial? 4 factorial can be broken up as 4 times 3 factorial, and then we have another 3 factorial at the end. And this is the same as 4 times 3 factorial times 3 factorial is the same as 3 factorial squared. So we seem to be heading on the right path because we're getting a couple of terms which are squared, which is good. We have a 2 and a 4, but maybe we can worry about that a little later. Right now, it's just a good sign that we're getting some perfect squares. Let's do 6 factorial and 5 factorial. Same thing. We're going to break up 6 factorial into 6 times 5 factorial. And this turns out to be 6 times 5 factorial squared. So this process can continue 
until the last two terms, 400 factorial times 399 factorial which is 400 times 399 factorial times 399 factorial which is 400 times 399 factorial squared. So the numerator is also the same as 2 times 1 factorial squared times 4 times 3 factorial squared times 6 times 5 factorial squared all the way to 400 times 399 factorial squared. And we're dividing all of this by 200 factorial. And now our problem has just become showing that this is equal to a perfect square. So our problem has just become showing that this is a perfect square. Now I'm just going to do a little bit of rearranging. So I'm just going to take 1 factorial squared, 3 factorial squared, 5 factorial squared all the way to 399 factorial squared and then we have everything else after. Now because this part is just a product of a bunch of perfect squares, this is actually a perfect square. So all we have to do now is show that this part is a perfect square, and then we have answered the question. Now there's something that stands out in the top part of this fraction. Notice that all of the terms 2, 4, 6, all the way to 400 are even. So they're all divisible by 2, and especially 400 is twice as large as 200. So we can rewrite this part as 2 times 1, which is 2, 2 times 2, which is 4, 2 times 3 is 6, and this continues up to 398, which is 2 times 199, and 400, which is 2 times 200. All of this divided by 200 factorial. Now I think that it's going to help us a lot if we just write out the definition of 200 factorial, and I think you'll see why in just a moment. So 200 factorial is the same as 200 times 199 times 198 all the way to 3 times 2 times 1. So why did we do this? There's a 200 here and a 200 over there. 199 and 199. 198. 198 is going to be somewhere over there, but 3, 2, 1 all go away. So in fact, the denominator is completely gone. So all we're left with is a bunch of 2's on the top. 
but how many twos? Well, we can just count the pairings. So this is one two, that's the second two, that's the third two, that's the 199th two, and this is the 200th two. So there are 200 twos, which means that this is the same as two to the power of 200. And this is actually a perfect square as well. It's two to the 100 squared. This means that this part is equal to two to the 100 squared. So overall, our original expression from the beginning has turned into one factorial squared times three factorial squared times five factorial squared all the way to 399 factorial squared times two to the 100 squared. And all of this is equal to one factorial times three factorial times five factorial all the way to 399 factorial times two to the 100, all of this squared. And since this is what we wanted to show, we have proved that our original question at the beginning is a perfect square. And notice how in this problem, you actually already knew all the topics involved. It's not like we were using anything that I didn't teach. So this problem was a very good example of combining many simple concepts to solve a very hard problem.